just like money is a good thing, but it can be used for evil or it can be used for good. Do people conspire? Do people make up conspiracies? Do people work together to get their own plan? People working behind the scenes to make other things happen. Nobody taught us how to do world domination, but we did world domination in this. Be careful with what this is because people are getting really emotional about it. What's going on everybody? Welcome to episode eight of Through Confusion. Today, we're gonna to be talking about COVID-19 and especially vaccines. And I have joining me special guest, very intelligent, handsome. We go way back. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Matt Lutz. <laughs> you know, Matt, really that's too kind. I mean, borderline narcissistic, but I'm really glad that you're taking the time to get so introspective right now. <laughs> so good, so good. So I think today, uh, in this day and age, most people just wanna live their lives. Most people wanna lead a quiet life, do their things, but with everything that's going on in the world, it's getting polarized, and um, if you don't say anything, then you're saying something. And so I think that's uh, caused a lot of people to uh, act this way or act this way. And with all that, it's really important to just stop, uh, think about the decisions that you're making, why you're thinking this way, with the social pressure, everything that's going on, is this the right way? Is this the way I wanna lead my life? Um, so, Narrowing down today, we want to have that conversation about COVID-19, especially the vaccine, because that was, um, yeah, just a touchy subject. I think people on both sides, and I want you to get into that a little bit more um, as we get into the conversation. But uh, to start off, I want you to dive into the topic of vaccines. What do you think about vaccines in general? I would say I'm not against vaccines. I mean, my knowledge, I'm like probably the typical standard civilian knowledge about vaccines. I'm not a doctor or anything like that. Um, and I was vaccinated as a kid. I have like tetanus and all those things. I think there's a lot of good uh, vaccinations out there. Um, and I definitely like, I mean, researching into this, I was like looking up, uh, what is it, uh, Dr. Edward Jenner. Um, who made the small vaccination famous. There was a few people around that. And really how we've seen like the eradication of smallpox around the world. And so I think vaccines in general, they've done a lot for society, save millions of lives. Um, so I think they're, I think they're good. Yeah, so pretty neutral. You wouldn't say like so crazy on one side or the other side. Um, would you say you have anything against them? Well, I would say like, it's a, not, it's good. It's a good thing, but just like money is a good thing, but it can be used for evil or it can be used for good. And um, the same way, like in the hands of bad people, they can use all sorts of things for bad. And I think uh, maybe that can be the case as well with vaccines. Yeah, true, 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 true. I totally agree with that. I, I, I would say the use of aborted fetal matter could be kind of like a stepping stone um, to make people compromise uh, their conscience um, because it's something you need, but it also has uh, something that maybe you're not okay with. Um, and I like, it's pretty hot for debate. Um, I was just watching a video and it's of course recent because there are so many people on both sides and so many people saying religious exemption for not getting a vaccine. Um, and so a lot of people who are for vaccines are really kind of like, that's the worst cop out you can do. Um, and it was kind of like pushing against it. And then um, it was, the video was going through the whole history of uh, the vaccines. And it was talking about how um, even 200 years ago or 120 years ago when they were developing um, the smallpox vaccine, when they took it to India, people were uh, so against it because it was, had cow um, use in uh, the development of the vaccine. And it was kind of like a spite towards uh, the people who say aborted fetal matter is um, like a problem to have in vaccines. And I don't think we're ever gonna wake up and be like, oh yeah, a baby is actually the same as a cow. So um, yeah, but you feel the tension of things going on with the vaccine. There's a lot of discontentment, I think. Yeah, definitely. I would say hindsight is always 2020. Um, and most people that are making these decisions today, they're going to look back and probably regret some of the things um, people are going to see uh, clearly when those things come to the light. 
Um, moving on, just so everybody has a better background, what kind of like conspiracy theories do you believe in? Do you believe in conspiracy theories? What would you say for them? I, I think it's important, like define conspiracy theory. I mean, we have like a lot of things like the flat earth or the moon landing or this or that. You, you don't go for the flat earth at all, no? <sighs> Are they helpful to people? People kind of fall off a cliff. They start going after this conspiracy or that conspiracy. And I don't think those are really helpful for us. Um, but like, take it back to the word conspiracy. Do people conspire? Do people make up conspiracies? Do people work together to get their own plan? Of, of course. And I don't think they're necessarily theory. I think it's a propaganda scheme a lot of times to get people to think, oh, this thing is too big. It can't be real. It's obviously a theory. It's a conspiracy theory. Um, but I think like there's a lot of uh, validity to people working behind the scenes to make other things happen. And I don't think a lot of uh, big conspirators, uh, so to speak, are too behind the scenes about that. I mean, like when I was in middle school, we did an online uh, civic mirror. So it's like as a class, we were all doing different uh, things and it was uh, to simulate a uh, city. Um, and we're in middle school and me and four of my friends overtook the whole class. Nobody taught us how to do world domination, but we did world domination in this. And so I think to think like, oh, people who are doing their own thing and wanting their own way like of course people are doing this all around the world yeah humans deep down we're pretty evil we're pretty evil what would you say about the moon landing do you believe we made it to the moon yeah i mean whatever whatever you want to think about that it's not helpful but i think conspirators use the word conspiracy theory the phrase all the time as a uh propaganda tool to get the to hide behind the smoke so that uh they can like it doesn't take common sense to realize that evil people do evil things. And that happens all the time around the world. <laughs> oh no. Okay, let's, let's get a little bit deeper now. Let's take this to COVID. Um, so why didn't you take the COVID vaccine? I mean, it's a good question. And I think I want to take this very carefully because it was, people were very passionate about it. Um, and on both sides and uh, yeah, really felt strongly about it. But I think um, for me, the overwhelming evidence was that it wasn't what it was saying it was. Um, and uh, there was a mass pressure that we just get vaccinated, it'll solve the problem. And I didn't see that. And I didn't wanna go with the pressure uh, to get vaccinated. And now hindsight, I mean, even Bill Gates came out and he said uh, that honestly, the mRNA vaccine wasn't it needs a lot of development. And he said, one, that it wasn't uh, broad, that it was very specific in the um, strain that it fought against. It wasn't long lasting, so you needed booster shots and all of that. And um, he said it wasn't preventative of the infection, that people actually were still getting COVID after the fact. And I think that's exactly what I saw during the pandemic. Yeah, definitely. I mean, all that comes out now. They're uncovering a lot of stuff. But during it, what were some of the red flags that you saw? I mean, honestly, I think there was like three main levels. There was the social, personal level. There was the organizational level and there was governmental level. So on the personal level, there was like fear. There was division. There was demonizing of people who weren't um, doing this. And I think like all of this stuff, anonymous reporting that people were doing um, and censorship that was happening of people saying anything. Like they would come up with, a, they would say, oh, this is what happened. And then they would get censored. So it was really uh, tearing the social fabric, which doesn't inherently mean that it's not, uh, that it's good or that it's bad. But I think it means like take a step back be careful with what this is because people are getting really emotional about it. And then on the organizational level, I would say um, there was too many conflicts of interest. Like if you have the biggest companies in the world are pharma and they're giving a product that now you're required the whole world to get. And so there's, and they're getting money for it. So there's a conflict of interest 
and uh, the distribution and all of that of, of these. And then in a governmental way, like the emergency lockdowns allowed for people who normally don't have so much power to take full like force when they called an emergency lockdown. And I think people are generally um, like power driven, power hungry. And I think that's why we have separation of powers in our country. Um, and people were taking so much power at one time and I don't think that was healthy. What would you say your feeling was in the midst of all of that? I mean, I would say going through all of it, uh, you see like this big double standard. You see like a lot of um, just shut down. I mean, I couldn't travel. Uh, I got turned around at the airport one time. Um, and of course, yeah, it's because I don't have the vaccine. But it was like almost as if if you got the vaccine, then you you were free to go. And if you didn't, you were a uh, uh, hindrance to society. And this was horrible. And to the point where like people who were working, faithful were employees who were at companies for 25 years, thousands of them were just getting fired on the way. Take the vaccine or get fired. And I think that kind of pressure, it was like, let me take a step back for a second and actually like think about this. Uh, why is there so much pressure around this? Why is it such like a do this and you're fine. Don't do this and you're, um, you're some kind of threat to terror of society. And they were a, a lot of good people that were standing up. Um, a lot of people who were like public servants. And um, so I was like, these are genuinely good thinking, logical people. Um, and so I think going through that, I mean, obviously it's challenging. Uh, fortunately, a lot of my jobs didn't have so much uh, pressure uh, for me to get vaccinated so that I didn't have to. Yeah. And then, and then moving on um, to like the church, Christians in general, how do you think our reaction was as a church at large? I think there were two main reactions. There was like the more um, rebellious side that you saw, like people like, I'm not getting vaccinated. I'm not doing this, me, everything. And then on the other side, the follow all the rules, uh, submission to authority. You need to blindly submit to them. Everything they say, just do it. You guys are being horrible citizens. Um, so I think there's like those two main camps. Um, well, then what is the correct response for it? Yeah, I think Christians are called to um, be obedient. I don't think we should be rebellious uh, in nature, but we're also very much not called to blind obedience. I think throughout the whole Bible, you see Christians standing with their conscience and just saying, no, um, I'm not doing that. And I think it's actually our duty as Christians to, to stand up with our conscience. Um, and to the point, like, there were a lot of, churches with GBC in Germany, a lot of people coming to them because nobody would baptize them um, in their normal church. Like they came to the faith. They didn't, during COVID, world was crazy. They came to Jesus. And then the church is like, yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, are you vaccinated? Oh, we can't baptize you. Honestly, the church always just constantly working against the church. And I think, what on earth? Like, this is somebody who's getting saved. Like, find a way around it. It's not life. Like, it was really, people were taking it way out of proportion. And Christians are not supposed to act in fear. Um, and I think, like, during the Black Plague, like, Christians were helping people. People were going around. That was very dangerous. Um, and so I think the same attitude, like, that people were like, Oh yeah, you have COVID, you're dying, go to your room. I, I don't want to see you like go isolate, lock the door. And people were looking way more for themselves than for the other people. And I think that's just not okay. Okay. Lots of good thoughts on a very touchy subject. Um, what can each person out there take home from this? Yeah, I think each person like, honestly, listen to your conscience, walk according to that, leave room for other people. Um, to make their decisions um, and look at look at the actual facts. Don't don't act in fear. Uh, don't just uh, go with the current um, or the herd mentality. Like really, just see, observe, see what's going on. Um, take a step back, uh, and I think 
don't don't get polarized into the point of demonizing other people um and i think we see this in any conflict that's going along in the world don't let anger rule your mind uh don't be overcome with evil but overcome evil with good um and don't allow that in your life and i think that's so important and of course take a stand on what is right like if you see things that are clearly blatantly wrong don't just turn the other cheek. Don't just turn your eye away from those things um, and just act like they're not there. I think it's so important to stand up because if nobody stands up, then there's nobody being the light in the midst of those uh, situations and, and leading and guiding the way. No, man, don't be, don't be ignorant. Be wise as serpents, but harmless as stubs. I would say that's, that's the call for us today. Well, thank you so much, Matt. That's what we got for today. If you like the content, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And God bless you guys. Have a great week. Yeah, yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, you out there.